guys, how's it going? In today's video, I wanna give you several tips on how to start a cottage style garden. Um, I've got this area right here full of gorgeous plants, just kind of laid out how I, I think I want them planted. And I'll go into more detail about each one of these plants here later on in the video. But what I have just quickly is catmint, a few roses, some beautiful white foxglove, ornamental onion, some pink yarrow, hookera, and then possibly some veronica. And the beautiful thing about cottage gardening is that there's so much freedom in it. There is far fewer rules. Um, there are no two cottage gardens that are the same. They very much so take on the personality of the gardener, which I find very interesting. So now that you kind of see how I have it laid out, I wanna go find a chair and I'm gonna sit down and we'll go over some of the tips um, that I have for you today. Okay, I'm much more comfortable now. I do have 10 tips to share with you and I'll try to go through them quickly so we can get the plants in the ground because that's the most fun part anyway. I do want to say a quick thank you to Espoma for um, partnering with us on this video. I'm going to be using a lot of their Biotone starter fertilizer to get these plants in the ground today, which I always use when I'm planting new things and I highly recommend it. So my first tip is to not plant anything in straight lines. When you do that, it lends to more of a sense of formality in your garden. It looks like you've got like soldiers standing in a row, um, like you're trying to plant a hedge, which I also like formal gardens, but it doesn't work as well for this style. Tip number two is to plant in large groupings instead of planting just one or two of a lot of different things. Instead, we're planting a lot more of the same variety and that way we can distinguish what is in that flower bed. If you get too many things going on, it can tend to look like a jumbled mess and it doesn't give any rest for your eye. Your eye will not know what to land on in that bed. So, you know, in this bed, I'm planting a handful of different varieties, but I'm making sure to plant at least three or five um, or seven and on Honestly, number doesn't even matter in a cottage garden. I know you've probably heard, you know, you don't need to plant in odd numbers. Well, for your anchor plants, that may be the case, which I'll talk about in a second. But um, when you're planting groupings of things, it doesn't matter if you plant four or five of something, you won't be able to tell in the end. Tip number three is that spacing doesn't matter quite as much in cottage style gardening. Um, so you don't actually want to space your plants as far apart as the tag says because in cottage gardening we want everything to marry together and blend together we want um, one variety of plant to move really gracefully into the next variety of plant without there being a bunch of space in between so you can really kind of fit a lot more in a cottage style bed than you can in a traditional flower bed the fourth tip is to create harmony with color and I know that this can be a little bit overwhelming because you go to the garden center and you love everything you want to plant all the things in your flower bed and I totally understand that but what I like to do in this style of bed is I like to just pick a few different colors and kind of go with that kind of color palette so that I can repeat uh, variations of those colors in the same space that way as you're moving down there's nothing jarring it's very peaceful and it really easy transitions from one plant to the next cottage gardens to me and they're all personal preference but I like softer colors I like purples pinks blues whites and light yellow and kind of this peachy apricot color and so that's what I've picked for this whole area. So as we move through, there's nothing like bright orange or bright red that jumps out and is screaming at you. Um, it all has a very harmonious look. And I think that that's kind of important for this style of garden. So I like the more soft colors, but I know a lot of you guys like more jewel tones, more co uh, colors that kind of pack a punch. So choose those, you know, do oranges and bright yellows and reds and more deep purples and use that as your color palette and repeat those colors throughout your bed instead of tossing in a really soft pink or something like that that can kind of throw that color harmony off. Tip number five, and this kind of goes for all flower beds, is to choose things that have different heights, textures, bloom time so that you have interest all the time. So like with the plants that I've chosen for this area, they're all very green in terms of foliage color, but they are all very different. So the ornamental onion has the kind of strappy grass-like foliage. The rose foliage is much more glossy than the rest. Uh, Foxglove has a bold foliage. And then we've got yarrow that's more feathery. And then the hookera has a little bit more of a silver overlay over the leaves. So they all are different enough that they'll all kind of shine in their own way. And then the heights are gonna be very different I'll have my higher things kind of toward the back, but height in a cottage garden is a little bit interesting because I have my roses in sort of a zigzag pattern. And um, so some of my rose height is gonna be pushed forward a little bit while I tuck some perennials in around the back to give it a little bit more interest um, and a little bit more movement. Tip number six is to add some sort of structural element or anchor plant. And this area has a lot of structure around it. It's not a very big flower bed, but I've got a fence right behind me. There's a walkway right in front of it. And then there's an 
an arbor not far away. There's a, tre you know, a trellis right here. Um, so there's a lot going on in, in terms of structure, but I am putting an anchor plant in here as well. I've got roses, which are my flowering shrub anchor plant. And then I'll fill in with kind of my fluffy, more blooming uh, perennials all the way around them. Uh, and you can use a lot of different things for your structure pieces or your anchor plants. If you need to bring a sense of formality to the area, if it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere and you've cut out a big section of grass or something and there's nothing behind it, kind of creating a wall, you can use evergreens. Evergreens are a great anchor piece in any flower bed. They will bring a, bring a sense of, sort of a sense of formality, a little bit of rest and wait for your eyes and a little, it'll bring some order, like a sense of order to the space. So it's all not just a jumble of flowers. And some of you may prefer that. That's the wonderful thing about cottage gardening. You don't have to use an anchor piece if you don't want to, or you can. You can add in um, some structural pieces like pieces of willow fencing or like little sections of picket fencing or any kind of decorative element you want, a fountain or a container. This one is so um, based on personal preference um, that that's I think where a lot of the interest comes in. And so right here I've got the Lady Gardener roses which are my anchor plant. Tip number seven is fragrance. And I think this is really important in all gardens, most especially cottage gardens, because we don't want just blooms. We want them to smell really nice. We want to hit that that sense of ours, you know, and kind of draws you in. So you can do all kinds of different things in terms of fragrance. You can plant roses like I'm doing today, lavender, there are chocolate cosmos. You can put a topiary or an obelisk in the middle of your uh, flower bed and grow honeysuckle or sweet peas up it. There's a lot of different options for that, but that's just something to think about. And the eighth tip, and it's not really a tip, it's just kind of something that goes along with cottage gardening, is that they don't have to be perfectly maintained. That's not what this type of garden is about. It's not about perfection. So if you want to get out there and deadhead and get your, you know, keep everything really pruned nicely and like really tidy, you can do that because I do, do tend to like to keep my roses deadheaded and things like that, but you don't have to in a cottage garden situation. So once you get everything filled up, um, you know, in fact, you don't even have as many weeds when you have a lot of perennials going on because they just have so much competition. They tend to not grow. Um, I find that, you know, I have very little maintenance when I actually fill up a flower bed as full as I'm going to do it today. Number nine is just something to watch out for when you're putting in a cottage garden, and that is that your cottage garden will not look the same from year to year. It will change drastically, usually um, from year to year, because a lot of times we're using perennials that like to self-seed, like foxglove. Um, we're using things like catmint that like to spread a little bit. And so one year you might love the combination and how everything's playing together, but then the year after you might think, you know what, I need to spend some time in there digging some things out and moving them to another area of my garden so that there's a little bit more room for everything else. Um, you know, it's just an evolving process and it's just a good thing to know. That brings me to tip number 10, and that is that the uh, cottage garden does not happen overnight. Um, you know, a lot of the time, especially in a larger size flower bed, like this is small, so I'm packing it out today, but in a really big size flower bed, most people can't go out there and deck the whole thing out in one year or two or three. It's an evolving process where every year you're adding more things in and that's totally fine. Um, you know, you might designate where you want a specific perennial and just plant two or three in that spot knowing that those plants are gonna grow and expand and you can divide them and make your clump bigger from year to year. Um, also, it's a good idea to start some things from seed. Um, throw in some cosmo seeds or zinnias or even do some perennials. I've done echinacea and rudbeckia and salvias. Um, I've done a lot of those things from a seed and it works really, really well. So if you like kind of more of that process, you know, definitely don't shy away from seeds and don't uh, worry if you're not filling up your area really quickly because it's just something that happens over time. I saw, this is the first time where it kind of like hit home to me. I saw a, um, a border going in in an estate in England and it was completely blank slate. There was a beautiful wall right behind it and I don't know if I have a picture, I'll see if I can find one. But it was, I don't even know how big it was, like maybe 20 feet deep and it was super long and it was just a bunch of four inch plants they had sitting on the ground. And it just kind of struck home to me. I thought, you know what? Even these estate gardens, it takes years to get the flower borders to look the way that they want them to look. It's just a process. So anyway, those are my 10 tips. Now I want to get all of these in the ground. I'm going to kind of manipulate them a little bit. I just kind of plunked them out here thinking I kind of liked the, the way they looked. I have four roses here. I might pair it down to three. So let me do a little um, move in here. We'll get them in the ground and then we'll give you a tour and show you how it all looks.
absolutely love how it turned out. I think the color blend is beautiful. The texture blend is wonderful. And I can't wait to see it fill in. I mean, that's one of the best parts is to see the plants just growing together and covering all of the soil. That's kind of the goal for me because the less soil I see, the less weeds I have because the plants will kind of act as their own weed suppression mulch um, when they cover that soil. Um, so first layer right here, this is called Cat's Pajamas Nepeta. It's a type of cat mint that grows about 12 to 14 inches tall and it will spread out on its own about 18 to 20 inches. So I did space them kind of closer together than they needed to be because they will fill in this little area. And I did want to start with something lower right here toward the front part of the walkway. Um, so my anchor plants, so there are four of them, I ended up using all four roses, are called the Lady Gardener. And I absolutely love just that kind of um, cream on the outside with that blushy apricot in the middle. Now these only grow about three feet tall and two and a half feet wide. That's why I figured I could fit all four roses in here and I think that they work out really nice. And they, they will be kind of my larger uh, plants in this area. Then right here, we've got the Foxy Hybrids Foxglove. I love these. These are a biennial, which means they um, kind of fizzle out after two years, but they do self-seed. So I'm hoping that they seed themselves all over in this area. So the Foxy Hybrids variety is kind of a blend. Like you could get a whole flat of them and you might get some whites, you might get some pinks. Um, so I'm hoping that these stay even when they seed. They may not stay white, but they'll still be in the white and pink family. Um, so I think we'll be really good there in terms of color blends. This is a new one for next year for 2020. This is called a Serendipi Serendipity Allium, um, an ornamental onion that grows about 15 to 20 inches tall, about a 10 to 15 inch spread. And I used four of them in here kind of as a sort of drift sort of. There is a rose in the middle, but I kind of like that. So we've got the group of plants and then the rose will kind of uh, rise up from the middle of that drift. And then right in front, I had a little spot that I wanted to add a little bit of sparkle. So this is a Blushing Princess um, Lobularia or Sweet Alyssum. This will absolutely fill in this whole area. It'll probably come out onto the walkway. These are wonderful plants to fill in spaces. And this area is full sun and most of these plants will do like either want part to full sun. We tossed a shade up so it was easier to see detail. Um, but I think all these plants will really thrive in this area. And then this one here is called a firefly amethyst achillea or yarrow. That's also a new one for next year. I love that color of pink. I think it's just so sweet with the purple and with the color of the rose. It grows about 18 to 22 inches tall and spreads out like really, really far, like 30 inches. So that is one um, that, I mean, it'll take a little while for it to spread out that far, but I will be dividing and taking pieces off of it and putting it elsewhere in my garden. Um, and then as we move this way, whoops, almost ran into my stand for the, the uh, shade. Uh, as we move this way, I've got some hookahs right here. These are called Dolce Spearmint. And I love the foliage on those because it's such a cooling color. It just looks like refreshing right here. And these will spread out quite a bit, like about maybe 16, 20, 22 inches. So I'm hoping that this is just a really nice thick drift of spearmint hookra here. And this is my foliage. Like, you know, it does bloom, these bright pink blooms on um, long stalks, but this is not why I'm growing it so much as for the foliage. Um, so, but it is nice that there is a little color there as well. And the last thing I planted, and this was a last minute addition, is this Brother Stefan Clematis. I just had this little hole right here that I needed something vertical. Um, so I decided to put that there and it can just ramble on this fence and just have this really nice, beautiful, like kind of periwinkle bluish lavender. I don't even know how to explain that color. It's beautiful. And the brother Stefan blooms all throughout the summer with these gorgeous flowers. And it's a really easy one to prune. I know clematis can be a little bit tricky that way. This one you want to prune to about three feet from the base uh, in early, early spring. So that means I'll probably come in and clean it up right up to the fence rail. So it grows like five to seven feet. So I'm kind of hoping to kind of trail it this way and have it mound up here. So anyway, I'm really excited to see how this area kind of comes together after it's grown a little bit. And that's kind of the makings of a cottage garden and kind of some of the guidelines I follow when I'm starting a new area. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and we will see you in the next one. Bye.